I want to finally mention just something called the Intertropical Convergent Zone. Again, it's another one of those things um, that you probably won't hear about in your daily life, but it's an important phenomenon in the equator. Um, it's important for sailing. It's important oceanographically as well. It's important atmospherically as well. <clears throat> and this is really where those trade winds collide and where that air rises in the doldrums. This is called the intertropical convergence zone. This moist tropical air that that rises over the equator, of course, is carrying heat with it. Because remember, to turn liquid water into water vapor, we have to add the latent heat of vaporization, that 540 calories per gram for water that's at 100 degrees and so on. So we're, that water, as it evaporates, is taking heat with it. So that air that's rising, that water that's evaporating and air that's rising over the equator is taking heat with it. And so the Hadley cell and the atmospheric circulation is distributing heat across the globe as that water vapor rises. As it sinks and condenses, and this is the part that most people aren't aware of, when rain forms, heat is released to the atmosphere. It has to, because as we go from a gas to a liquid, we have to release that latent heat of vaporization. And when we release that latent heat of vaporization, we're releasing heat to the atmosphere. So movements of water vapor from the tropics to higher latitudes are actually carrying heat with them. And for that reason, the tropics are called Earth's heat engine. And the global atmospheric circulation through water vapor is carrying heat to different parts of our globe, but it really keeps us nice and toasty here uh, at higher latitudes. We don't all have to live on the equator. So through water vapor, and because of the principles of vaporization, heat, the late of latent heat, we're moving heat around on our planet. And when that water vapor condenses, it releases that heat, of course, and you see rainfall and heat release to the atmosphere. That's really what this discussion is about. In that way, the tropics act as a kind of firebox. The tropical ocean has been called a firebox for Earth's atmosphere, just like logs on fire are a firebox for, your, for keeping your living room nice and warm. We see this feature, the intertropical convergence zone, very well in the Atlantic Ocean, which, excuse me, in the Pacific Ocean. We also see it very well sometimes, not as uh, in the Atlantic Ocean, but it's this band of clouds that we find across the equatorial Pacific. Again, as we have trade winds moving towards this region, and as we have air rising, of course, off the equator, this is a very warm band of water across here. So there's lots of, lots of evaporation. There's also, as a result, lots of clouds form, and these clouds are also raining as well, because as this water heats up, um, until this heat is moved away, water vapor is moved away, we also get lots of clouds. So we also get lots of rain. So it turns out we actually have a lower salinity across the equatorial Pacific than we might otherwise uh, expect because of, again, this interaction between the atmosphere and the ocean, cloud formation and rain, and also the meeting of the trade winds, and then eventually that water vapor being distributed to higher latitudes. But this intertropical convergence zone is a major feature of the atmosphere. It changes water salinities. It actually even changes uh, the light environment here um, and many things oceanographically um, that we may or may not get a chance to talk about as we move into those kinds of subjects. But it's the intertropical convergence zone that helps explain some of the oceanographic features that we see in the middle of the equatorial Pacific.